If you like the video, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Ronin MX, Canon C100. Can the two work together to make stabilizing heaven on your tracking shots? Yes, they can. Welcome to Pull My Focus, Ventures in the World of Digital Filmmaking, where we give you the inside tips you need to make great video. Why the Ronin MX? Well, DJI makes the Ronin series, the Ronin 2, Ronin, Ronin MX, Ronin M, and Ronin SC. And they go down in descending order of the payload capacity that they're spec for. In our case, we're working with the Canon C100 Mark II and the Ronin 2, Ronin, and the Ronin MX are rated to work with it. I wanted to try out the MX because it's cheaper to rent uh, and to purchase. It's also three pounds lighter than the Ronin. Now, three pounds may not sound like a lot, but the stripped down uh, C100 is about four pounds and the Ronin MX is six pounds. So we're talking 10 pounds that we're carrying around take after take after take. Now first, let's make a clear distinction between the two types of stabilizers, mechanical and motorized. Mechanical are stabilizers that isolate the operator's movement from the camera using mechanical means, springs, weights, and a balanced gimbal point. Now this of course references the original, the Steadicam, invented by Garrett Brown. And of course, the uh, stabilizers that came after the mechanical, like the Glycam. If you're interested, check out the link in the description below to a scan of the interview I did with Garrett Brown back in 1997. This was in Film Crew Magazine, a magazine I published at the time and co-founded. Motorized use motorized gimbals. You still have to balance the camera initially, but the motors take over after that and maintain a balanced and stabilized camera. When new to using a stabilizer, it's not uncommon to be a bit concerned about how to balance it correctly. There are quite a few videos on YouTube about it. That the thing with a motorized stabilizer is you don't have to be too concerned with it. Uh, you just have to get it as close as you can, but the closer, the better, because it helps uh, lengthen the unit's battery time, because that battery is what's powering those motors to maintain balance and stabilize the camera. So if the balance is way off, it's constantly working to maintain that balance. Okay, so we balance the camera on the stabilizer on those three axes I mentioned, pan, tilt, and roll. First, I slide the camera onto the camera mount and work on tilt. There's usually two adjustments for tilt. Uh, the first is sliding the camera back and forth um, in the direction of the lens. Uh, that's pretty easy. And then, normally, you would tilt the camera all the way back and have it pointing straight up. And then you would slide the camera along the tilt bar in relation to the tilt motor. But you don't have to do that with the C100. You just push the camera mount bar, the bar that the camera is mounted to, all the way down. Why is that? Well, the C100 is kind of a tall camera, and the Ronin MX comes with a top bar that you would normally use with a DSLR. You would attach it to the hot shoe on the top. But you, even if you wanted to, you can't use it with the C100 because, well, it's, as I mentioned, too tall. And for that reason, and don't freak out, but if you tilt the C100 too far back on the Ronin MX, the eyepiece will hit the back. No. Easy. Now, if you also tilt it too far forward, it will hit the top as well. I said, don't freak out. What is he? You may have heard that some people think the Ronin MX is useless with the Canon C100 for this reason. But I don't really find it a problem, and here's why, because I'm really using it to stabilize the camera. I'm not tilting back and forth independently of the Ronin MX. It's moving with me as I move around. If you were using it maybe on a jib arm, that might become a problem where you're operating the camera and moving it remotely uh, and independently 
of the Ronin MX. But handheld, it's not a problem. And I'm going to show you in a little bit how we use the C100 in upright mode, which makes this even less of a problem, but we'll go in that, into that in a little bit. Next, we slide the camera side to side on that bottom bar that we're mounted to in order to adjust the side to side roll axis. Then we adjust the knob on the back of the overall carriage of the Ronin MX in order to adjust pan. I've linked to a couple of videos in the description below that I think go into um, balancing in a little bit more detail of cameras in general on the Ronin and the Ronin MX. Now, in a lot of how-to balance videos, you'll see people talk about setting up your camera with minimal gear. I mean, you're gonna be carrying that thing around uh, take after take, so it meant, makes sense to kind of pare it down. So with the C100, I take off the top handle and I take off the hand grip. Now, losing the hand grip means I lose that awesome wheel for adjusting my f-stop. But what I've done is on the camera left side, I've set uh, button number 13 and 14 to adjust my f-stop up and down respectively. Now they also mention taking the lens cap off when you balance the camera. Otherwise, when you go to shoot, this will happen. <laughs> but here's the thing. There's no way in hell I'm going to set up balance and then turn on a motorized stabilizer without some kind of protection for the front element of my lens. There's just no way. Keep the lens cap on, then balance the camera, and then when it's set, take the lens cap off and adjust the tilt axis. You only have to move it a smidge. Get used to doing this because you're gonna have to make this adjustment of the tilt axis if you change the focal length of your zoom lens because it changes the length of your lens, right? Or if you change your lens out altogether. It's really not a big deal. Besides, whenever I set the stabilizer down because I'm checking a take, uh, pulling off of the SD card and whatnot, I'm going to put the lens cap back on to protect my lens and to, I'll turn the motors off uh, using the DJI app on my phone with the button motor kill. The reason is it saves on the battery life of the unit, right? Because it's constantly powering those motors to not only stabilize but to balance your camera and it prevents the the possibility of it freaking out mattering on how you set it down, particularly if you're in upright mode. The unit is still powered, just not the motor. So when you pick it up to go do your next take, you just turn the motors back on, boom, it stabilizes and everything's good. The standard mode of the Ronin MX is to have the camera hanging, which is called underslung mode. And that's great if you're shooting chest height or lower. But if you want to shoot shoulder or eye height, you've got to really hold the whole rig up in a bit of an awkward way and it gets tiring and old really fast. But DJI has come up with an additional mode called upright mode and it works great with the C100. In the DJI app, make sure that camera base invert is turned on. Otherwise, when you flip the DJI Ronin MX, into upright mode, it will freak out trying to rebalance itself. You also have to reverse the direction you slide the camera onto the base mount and the, on the base bar. I found it was best to do this while I was already in upright mode and I needed someone to help and hold uh, the rig for me on top of the Ronin tripod. Use the illustrations in the manual to make sure that you've got it set up just right in upright mode. For example, the tilt motor is camera right when you are in upright mode, but when you're in underslung mode, it's camera left. Note the awesome stand that comes with the Ronin MX, which is great when you're using it in underslung mode, is not so helpful in upright mode. Now, once in upright mode, you only need to rebalance the roll axis and that's because we've flipped the camera around on that base mount. But what I discovered was the cover 
to the threads where we would normally attach the grip handle, well, it hits the side vertical bar of the rig. So what I did is I took it off and I put uh, gaffer's tape on the threads to protect it and that allowed me to um, slide it and get it into place. Definitely cover those threads. You don't want them damaged. They are a part of the C100 case and you don't want to have to replace that. With a mechanical stabilizer, you have to take time to learn how to move with it to keep it steady, but also to be able to pan, tilt, roll, basically point the camera and create the frame that you want as you're moving with it. Well, a motorized stabilizer is a gyro. In its default mode, it's meant to keep the unit balanced and locked on those three axes, regardless of where you move or how you move it. It will always point in the same direction. In order to pan or tilt, we have to tell the motors to do that for us. And we do this with the Ronin MX using smooth track mode. You can turn it on or off uh, for either axis using the DJI remote. We're going to leave roll locked, but we're going to have it on for pan and tilt. Now, how does it work? Well, note that the Ronin comes with a remote. The remote, we're not going to use it, but it's designed to be used when it's on a jib arm where you can't physically grab it. And the thumbsticks tell the motors to pan or tilt the camera in whatever direction that you want. But we're hand holding the Ronin. It's not on a jib arm. So that means when we physically move the unit, that's sending notification to the motors like those thumbsticks that we want it to pan or tilt in that direction. Sounds good, but it's electronic versus mechanical. How fast is that motor going to move the camera in the pan or tilt direction? How does it know when to start moving and when to stop? And how do you adjust those? There are three settings for each axis, speed, dead band, and acceleration. Speed is the base speed at which the motor will move the camera. That is how fast it will tilt or pan. Dead band determines how much you need to move before the motors kick in and start moving the camera in that direction. If it's too sensitive, it'll move and create shake like on a tracking shot when you don't want it to. If it's too little, it'll lag big time when you want it to move. That last setting, acceleration, is how quickly it will come up to that base speed once dead band tells it to start moving. Kind of like feathering up to speed and down from speed with a dolly. Each setting runs from zero to 100. That's a bit of a range. What's the best setting, you ask? Well, that depends on your shot. Are you tracking talent in a straight line or are you panning with them? How far away are they from the camera? The closer they are when you're panning, the faster that pan base speed is going to need to be. So I know you probably are like, well, okay, that's great, but what was your settings, Frank? Okay, what worked for us was 40, 5, and 40. That was just, for the most part, tracking straight back with talent with very little movement. But for tracking, it worked great. Using the C100 in upright mode uh, was great. That was my favorite way to use it. It was problematic every time we had to set it down to pull the card and check the shots. Each time we set it down, we also hit motor kill in order to save the battery. It was very easy to turn it back on once we had it in hand and it just snapped back into stabilized place. We were really happy with the Ronin MX and we're thinking about using it more. But I have to be honest, the reason why I wanted to play with a motorized gimbal is because uh, I wanted to get around the learning curve to get good at using a mechanical stabilizer like the Glidecam. But I'm thinking, I don't know, I think I would rather use a Glidecam because I it's more intuitive to me when I'm physically moving during a shot to physically move the camera mechanically. 
my hand moves, the camera moves, and it moves where I want to frame it. Versus having to make adjustments in an app and how I tell a motor to move for me. Doesn't mean you can't good at, get good at doing it that way as well, and I probably will learn both. Uh, and it's clearly a matter of choice uh, in what works best for you. But either way, it's a well-designed product. It was easy to use, intuitive. Um, you have to learn something, you know, with the app and the motors and all that. But I mean, that's just par for the course, right? But it's very clear they designed it with operators in mind. I mean, just the upright mode, which had to have taken some work, not just mechanically, but also um, in the software, uh, was just a, a genius thing for them to do. So hats off to DJI. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out pullmyfocus.tv. That's where we put up the companion articles that go with most of our videos. And don't forget to uh, check out our Patreon if you're a regular viewer and want to help support what we're doing. So thank you.